Yeah, I brought along a bit of a prop. I actually just wanted to see what you guys thought of this, being the uh, the Johnny Warman single, The Screaming Jets. Just ask you about the name of your band. Oh, he ripped that off. Of <laughs> yeah, yeah, Johnny Warman ripped us off in 1981. Um, me and me, mate, <laughs> it's like uh, Steve Vice doing Coldplay. Um, Screaming Jets, Johnny Warman had this album called Walking in the Mirrors, came out in 81, that me and me mate used to listen to. So roll forward to 1986, we're standing out the front of the, oh no, sorry, 89, we're standing out in front of um, a rehearsal room and didn't have a name, we'd, we'd already done one gig, pardon me, as the Love Bombs, which was at an ecstasy party, and that was never going to be our, our moniker, and then I was singing, that we, you know, everyone was like, you know, mulling over names. And I was singing, I heard the Screaming Jets just, you know, walking around having a cigar. And um, our drummer said, what about that? And I said, what? And he said, the Screaming Jets. And I, we thought, oh, yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I looked down on the ground, and there on the ground there's this block of silver foil, that big, right, this big. Right? I go, what's that? So I bend over, I pick it up, open it up. Voila, black putty. <laughs> I found a block of hash and I went, That's it. That's the name. If that's not a sign from the Lord, then nothing is. So, black yeah. hash, is that the band? <laughs> black hash. That's what we wanted to call it. What's the B side on that thing? American Machines. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, he's actually, Johnny Warman has actually been in touch with the Jets to, yeah. to do some gigs with us. He still tours around England and stuff. So. Yeah, probably riding on the coattails of you guys. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's good, mate. That's yeah, a good little score, nice that. Classic. Beautiful. Yeah, so well, don't let that out of your soul. No. <laughs> um, what's over the years, or you know, between both years, what would be your favourite, some of your favourite Screaming Jet songs that you're probably most proudest of? Um, oh, look, for me, oh, the, the, the song that I love probably recording the most and still do love singing is uh, Helping Hand yeah. because at the time, at the time, it was like to just totally one out of the box. It was, you know, not a jet song. It didn't sound like a jet song or any, anything. And they actually told us when uh, when we were going to release it as a single, that, what are you doing? You jets can't have trumpet in a song, you know. And uh, and it came out, and it's it's been one of our most successful songs. And, and you know, when we we're up there doing it live, and everyone's screaming it back, eh? it's a pretty good feeling. Yeah. Awesome. I'm a big fan of uh, some of the stuff Paulie's wrote, written. Think. Yeah, I think's a big, big favourite of mine. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, so that should have been huge. That song. I know. I know. Great video. Didn't catch on. Yeah. 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 Some of the new so the new stuff, stuff I have, yeah, my right. ethnic, uh, <laughs> ethnic styles <laughs> made its way in. You do you? Oh. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, mate. Yeah. We'll just move that. There's a bit of. Yeah, you're right. What? Yeah. Be with you again. <laughs> All good. Yep. All good. Carry on as you were. All right. Um, just ask both is what do you think about the current state of rock and roll like around the world and particularly in Australia? Um, oh look, this I think the the worst part I reckon is that the floodgates have opened with um with with the internet you know and there's so much shit out there. Whereas and the other side of the coin was record companies and they regulated what came out. So I, I wish there was a happy medium rather than just any shit in the world being available and, and, and what record companies say. But yeah. having said that, bands like The Butterfly Effect I love, they're a good bunch of blokes, have done some gigs yeah. with them and um, Living End, love them guys. Um, Foo Fighters, you know, any guitar guitar driven rock I'm yeah. a big fan of. And Pink, Pink I love and and although I'll, I'll probably get shot for saying it, Kelly fucking Clarkson has got one of the best voices I've yeah. heard in my life. Yeah. But, so I don't mind listening to her but but Pink's probably, uh, yeah, there's a scoop. Yeah. Well, it's real and it's got edge and attitude. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't, mate, and she sings her tits off. Well, she doesn't, because they're still there, they're big, massive hooters on the front of <laughs> She's a bogan. She's, She's a, a mad bogan, song. Kelly Clarkson, yeah. yeah, yeah, and admits it. She's proud of it. Yeah. Um, just on that sort of US thing, um, what's, is there much difference between like a gig in US, Australia, or, or England, places like that? Have you noticed with yeah, the culture or the crowd? You can't say cunt in America yeah. at all. <laughs> it's out, <laughs> which excludes one of our yeah, favourite songs. Yeah. But um, 
Oh, pretty well. Anyone, um, like with a rock show like ours, it's like all about going nuts and shaking your head and banging your head and stuff. It kind of translates pretty pretty well anywhere. The only place that I ever really noticed that people weren't right into the band, because I get up and do I, you know, <laughs> carry on and muck around. And uh, it was Italy. They didn't like us at all in Italy. I don't know why. They're, they're all into to dance music and fucking models in Italy. Um. What about just like in, within Australia, like um, from our point of view, the Bogan thing, is it particular, like say inland versus coastal, any any difference there in the attitude of say a surf crowd versus a, a country or Bogan sort of crowd? Yeah, so I'm one of those guys, I, I, I see surfers at the Bogans too, yeah. I mean growing up in Newey, we, we, all the surfers that we, yeah we kind of, um, I've, I've just noticed that everywhere we go kids want to rock. <laughs> As long as you're up there, you know, playing good, we pride ourselves on being, you know, a great band who, who you know, the guys are all fucking yep. awesome musos and and we kind of pride ourselves on that. And so anywhere we go, whether it be a surf crowd or playing at a at the push bike, we played at the, the downhill um, cha world championships in Cairns one time, so we are playing to a bunch of cyclists, you know, and that was awesome as well. So. As long as we're up there putting on a show, it kind of the Probably audience right, just transcends all yeah, that. exactly. Yep, yep, yep. Um, bit of a bit of an odd question, but have you ever looked out in the crowd and spotted someone that you would not expect to see at a Screaming Jets gig? Oh well, we um, my wife's good mates with um, Natasha Stott de so okay. yep. we did a gig in Adelaide um, at the start of this year, and she got she was there. <laughs> So saw her, but, uh, rocking out, or rocking out, yes, having a ball. Yeah. But um, Lounsy, Craig Lowndes come one night, and, and it, not that I didn't expect to see him there, because I know all the V8 guys love the, love yep. rock and the Jets, and we've met quite a few of them. But um, Lounsy's up the front, and we're at Bathurst, we're playing there on Bathurst weekend. I go, how's this? Lounsy's up the front, and the whole crowd goes, zoom, and I just see him look at me, go, thanks, fuckface, <laughs> <laughs> and then he was gone. I've never seen, I've seen him a couple of times since. He said thanks for that. But, yeah. uh, um, just a couple of things on, on up and coming bands and current bands. Oh, hang on. Yep. Prince Albert of Monaco come and see us. When the Olympics were on, uh, we did a gig at, at, Oakley, at Oakley Sunglasses. We were looking after us at the time. A little, shed, little place with that gig upstairs. Yeah, the Bondi, Bondi RSL or something.